everybody. Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'm down in my seed starting studio. I'm going to be starting so many seeds today. I've got to do last week's and this week's because I never got around to doing last week's schedule. So come with me and let's get a ton of seeds into some soil. You may remember that I told you about how I put together my schedule for my seed starting efforts. And I have them in this little teeny tiny notebook that I got at the Dollar Tree. One double page spread per week in the growing season. And so I have them all dated and counted back the week of March 8th, which is uh, this week that we're in right now is five weeks before my average last frost date, which is April 12th. So, in the week of March 8th, I had scheduled that I was going to be starting amaranth, bunny tail grass, rudbeckia, status, and stock. I haven't gotten those done yet. And I was supposed to last week at the six week before my average last frost date, I was supposed to start campanula, celosia, delphinium, gomfrina, phlox, salvia, scabiosa, spinach, lunaria, stock, strawflower, painted lady pole beans, milkweed, penstemon, and shallots, and stevia. And last week I was traveling and I didn't get a chance to do any of the seeds starting last week that I was supposed to do. So I have a lot to do today. What I've done, I've already gone through, I've pulled out all of my seed packets for today's planting schedule. And I've already made the labels for them. And on each of the labels I've put what it is, today's date of the date that I'm sowing it. And then I put the range of expected germination days. So if it says, for example that it should germinate in seven to 14 days. And then I put today's date, March 10th. And then in parentheses, I put three, uh, 17 to 24, which would be seven to 14 days from the date that I started. And that way I can know at a glance, if they haven't germinated yet, I can say, it's okay, it's not supposed to be germinated yet. And I don't go crazy staring at them, wondering why they haven't grown yet. So I've already done that for all of the seeds. And then I've organized them in piles based on when the first date of their expected germination is. And that way I can put all of the ones that are supposed to germinate starting on the same day into the same tray. Now that's not to say that they will germinate on the same day. It's just that you know, if I have all of these packets that say the first possible day of expected germination is March 15th, then I know that all of these should start showing up sometime on or after March 15th. The other thing I did was I marked on the uh, plant label if they need to go on to the heat mat or not. So the temperature here in the basement, it might fluctuate by one degree up or down, but pretty much it is at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right at or under 20 degrees Celsius. So I looked at the seed packets for all of my seeds and I checked what temperature they want to be at for proper germination. For example, this is Echinacea. It wants to be at 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 21 Celsius. And I know that I stick around at 68 degrees Celsius, so I don't have to put these on the heat mat. The room temperature is going to be just fine for germinating those Echinacea. However, for something like, oh, this Salvia, let's look at it. This is annual Salvia. It wants to germinate at 75 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 to 25 degrees centigrade. So I do need to heat these as they're germinating because they want to germinate at a warmer temperature than the air temperature here. So I have several heat mats available and I've organized my seeds so that I'll be putting all of the things that need heat mats onto heat mats and then all of the things that don't need heat mats not on heat mats. So now, uh, I don't exactly know how many of each of these seeds I'm going to be starting. Like I said, I've got all kinds of things in here. Most of them are flowers, not many vegetables, but I do have some spinach and shallots. And yeah, spinach and shallots I need to be starting. So uh, I'll be thinking about how much of that I want for the garden. But the rest of it is really just, you know... I could do one seed of each of these and I still probably wouldn't have room for all of them. So I don't know, I probably won't do more than six cells of anything 
I don't know. I'll, I'm just going to let the spirit move me. I have the seeds here. I have the potting soil or seed starting mix. And I have friends and neighbors who might want some seedlings. So I'm just going to go for it and, you know, let Mother Nature tell me how many seeds I should be putting in. Okay, let me show you how I did my soil this year. You know what? I have... Oh, let me sit. Oh my gosh. My knees. My knees are an old person's knees. My mind is a young person's mind, but my knees are old people knees. Okay, so I have filmed my seed starting process no fewer than three times already this spring, and none of those have made it onto YouTube because one of them had severe audio issues, one of them had severe video issues, and one of them I didn't get around to editing until it was weeks later, and I was like, what's the point of filming that? That's not uh, relevant anymore. So I'm going to one more time, I'm going to film how I go about starting my seeds this year and let you know all my process and if it makes it onto YouTube, we'll celebrate. Okay, here is a bin that I've put in some coconut core. I bought a brick of coconut core and I put hot water on it to loosen it up and that made this beautiful, beautiful mix. And then I added in this perlite and um, I didn't measure anything. I just kept mixing in perlite until the amount of white dots to brown coconut looked right. And really that's all I did. Now I've been using it out of this bin and I don't know, can you see that like up here it's nice and light colored because it dried out, but then right under like less than an inch under it's again dark and moist and still got water in it. So this tells me that it is holding water and not drying out. Now there are no air holes down in there, so that's part of the reason why it's not dry, drying out down in there, but I've been really noticing how much this coconut core doesn't dry out compared to when I have used peat-based um, potting soils in the past. I've not been covering this bin at all. And the last time I added water to this was, oh, probably two weeks ago, and it's still moist and holding together. So that tells me that my seeds in the cells aren't drying out either. Even though it looks dry on top, like right here, you know, just right underneath it, it's still got lots of moisture in it. So I, I have to be careful to not overwater all of my seedlings, knowing how much this coconut core is holding water. Anyway, all right, so I mixed coconut core with perlite and water, and I came up with this mix, which looks great to me, and I've been using this for my seed starting. I did not do anything to sterilize it, but I have not had any fungus mat issues, so apparently the coconut core didn't have any fungus mat eggs in it, so that's good news, because oftentimes heat will have that. Okay, and I'm using, you know, a paint stir stick to stir it. Actually, usually I'm using my hands to stir it. And then I'm using this ice scoop that I bought off of Amazon. I, I don't know, 16 ounce ice scoop, something like that, stainless steel to use as my scooper. I am still using my bootstrap farmer trays. These are really heavy duty plastic. They will last for years and years and years. I've been really liking them. I bought uh, lots of these six cell um, cell packs and a lot of these 1020 trays. Got them in bright colors, I love them. Uh, there's a link in the description box down below if you also want to get some bootstrap farmer stuff. So I'm just filling these up. Nothing magic here, folks. Really, I just use my hands. And I just kind of scrape it across the top of there and call it good. I'm not really packing this in. I'm just kind of, you know, scraping it across there. And with just that pressure of pushing down on it as I pull it back and forth, it does a pretty good job of filling in all the way down nice and firmly. But I don't want to be too tightly packed or too loose. So I'm just trying to find a little happy medium there. You'll find your own method, I'm sure. I would use the scoop, but I love getting my fingers in the dirt, especially this time of year when we're all craving spring, you know. At the beginning of the season, I had a bunch of these colors, and I was trying to color code, you know, put flowers in the pink ones and put vegetables in the green ones and stuff, but very quickly <laughs> gave up on that because at some point you run out of the color you're thinking you want, and you do with what you got. All right, so somewhat quickly, I have a nice full tray 
of um, six pack cells. So exciting to see these sitting here and just waiting to be planted. Ah, yes, okay. Now, how am I going to decide what's going where? Or rather, how am I going to decide which to do first? Uh, let's see, let's plant these things that want to go early. All right, that needs heat, that needs heat. Luckily, almost all of these would like to be on heat. All right, so in this pile here, these all are expected to germinate on or after March 15th, five days from now. So, and they all want to be on the heat. So what I'm gonna do is assign a six pack. So, all right, so this um, annual salvia, I think I want more than six of those because those are gonna be bedding annuals. So I'm going to make 12 of those. Status, I definitely don't need more than six because I have three kinds of it. So I'll just do six of each of those. Uh, this stock is one that I picked up. It's different from the Quartet Rainbow and the Iron White that I got from Johnny's. Um, I think I picked this up at a garden center. And I've never grown this kind. It's supposed to get 15 inches tall and be these bright colors. So I think I will go ahead and do 12 of those in case they're gorgeous and the best thing ever. This is annual phlox, and I think I want 12 of those as well. And let's see what I have left. Okay, gomfrina. Uh, I have some gomfrina that I tried planting last year and it didn't go well, and so I'm gonna try six of those. And um, I have this gomfrina, which may or may not contain seed. I tried to collect seed off of my gomfrina plants last year. These are the truffle pink that I bought as annuals from the garden center. And so I tried to save seeds. This may not work. I'm just gonna stuff a bunch of them in here and see if it works. So that's it. All right, so this is my plan. That worked out really nicely. All of these wanna go on the heat mat and all of them are expected germination on or after five days from now. So that in mind, I'm going to, first I'm gonna make another tag for this cell so that if they get separated, I don't get confused. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there. Put that there. All right, this is Victoria Blue Salvia. It's an annual salvia. It's perennial in zones eight through 10. Uh, long lasting cut flower and can be dried. And so you're supposed to sow them six to eight weeks before your last frost. I'm at five weeks before my last frost, oh well. Gently press the seed into soil, but don't cover as light germs aid, uh, light aids germination. Bottom water or mist to avoid covering seed. Transplant to cell packs or larger containers at second true leaf stage. I'm already putting them in a cell pack, so I don't have to worry about that. Harden off and transplant after last frost. So, so these just go right on the surface. Okay, and it says that I got 50 seeds and I'm putting, I have uh, 12 cells here. So I think I'll put two in each cell. I should end up using half of my seeds. They're pretty small. I'd say they're just a little bit smaller than sesame seeds. And they're stuck in my fingernail, so that's weird. Let me try this trick. Yeah, there we go. Did I put some there already? I did. No! Oh, I'm such a weirdo. I just poured a bunch of seeds on my table and onto the floor. So I was trying to get dirt out of my face. All right, well, this this is not the method to use, folks. Don't have a manicure that's getting in your way and don't spill your seeds all over the table and lose half of them. So I'm just gonna have to put them on here, the ones I can find. Yeah, they're all over the floor now. Dang it. How many of them went here? Quite a few of them. All right, I was able to save, it looks like 15 or 20 of them. So I'm gonna put these back in here. <sighs> Can't take me anywhere. 
All right, so that's Victoria Blue Salvia. That's done. One more. Put you in there. All right, press them in. Who knows if I got one, two, or zero, or three, or four, or five in some of these cells, but it is what it is at this point, folks. Pretty awful. Okay. Now, for things that need light to germinate, they tell you don't put anything on top. Don't cover them with soil or anything. I'm going to put a little bit of a coat of very fine vermiculite on here, and that way that might help hold in moisture, and it might help prevent algae growth on the top of the soil, but it's light enough that the light can still get through to the seeds. So I have some of this. This is what I've been using for the last three seasons. This bag has lasted me three spring seasons so far, although I'm almost out. Just put a little bit of vermiculite right on top, just to provide a little bit of safety for the seeds. All right, so salvia, Victoria Blue, done. Now I'm gonna work on the status, and then the stock, and then the flocks, and then the gumprina. I may or may not speed this up, depends on what kind of mishaps occur. First, Heavenly Blue status. This is seed from 2021. Seed depth is quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is actually scrape off the top quarter of an inch of this soil and recover it after I get the seeds put on there. All right, these are oblong and about an eighth of an inch long and pretty skinny. Uh, let's see if I can be more careful with these. Looks like I have eight seeds. No, well, where that went. Looks like I have seven seeds. So I have six cells and seven seeds. So I'll put this last extra guy in one of the other cells. Maybe. There we go. All right, and now I'm just going to cover these up with a quarter of an inch of soil, roughly. There we go. Those are done. And this packet is empty. Next up, Seeker White status. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm assuming it also wants to be a quarter inch deep. These seeds are two years old now, so I'm going to go ahead and put two in each cell in case they don't germinate very well. All right, there. Got two per cell. I'm just gonna put the tiniest little bit of soil. That's the top of that. All right, this guy, I'm not using him yet. I don't know what he's gonna get. Making progress. Half done. Stock, 10 weeks stock. These, uh, again, right on top of the soil. Uh, they sprout in five to 10 days. They'll get to be 15 inches tall. And flowers in the early summer or fall. I'm gonna make another tag, 10 week stock. I wonder why it's called 10 week. Is that because it takes them 10 week to flower? Or is that because it takes them 10 weeks so you can plant them out? Or they flower for 10 weeks? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Okay, you're going to be stock also. I'm going to just press you in the top of the soil so I don't need to dig down. Oh, I better put these guys away. Phew, that was almost bad news. All right. How big are these seeds? Oh, these look different. Ooh. So they're different colors, and the seeds are different colors, too. They got some dark ones, some medium ones, some light ones, different shades of brown, different shades of gray. How fun! All right. Um, should I do two per cell or one per cell? Let's do two. I wonder if the dark seeds are dark flowers. And the light seeds are white flowers. That would make sense, wouldn't it? I wonder. 
I mean, I could do an experiment. I am trying to put the same color seed into the cell when I put two in each cell and make them the same color as each other so that I don't lose my color diversity when I thin or if I thin. I might not thin. I might just separate and keep them all. Why not? We could use 24 stock, don't you think? Even though I have three other kinds of stock also. Sure. Got all the room in the world. I mean, we still have grass. And I figure as long as we have grass, we got room for more gardens. Yeah, I'm not being totally precise about this, trying to get the same color seeds in the same color thingy because there's a lot of variation here. Is that the same shade or is it a slightly different shade? I don't know. Now, I am not growing at scale, which is a good thing because if I did, I wouldn't make very much money per hour compared to how much time I put into this. I've been sitting down here in the seed starting studio the better part of two hours and all I've done so far is seed these things. Oh, you know, there's that. All right, so I got those done. So let me put these back in here. Those are done. Uh, they need to be pressed into the soil. And I'm, I am going to use some vermiculite. Actually, I think I'm going to use vermiculite on all of this whole tray. For its antifungal properties. Okay, now. Phlox, sugar stars. This is an annual phlox. I've never tried to grow annual phlox from seed before. So this is going to be a first for me. This is sugar stars phlox from Baker Creek Seed. It is an annual, very fragrant blooms, pale lavender to deep violet, white star-like centers, and intricate contrasting striping makes a great border plant. Blooms over a long season. All right, says that you should direct sow in place, but I'm going to pre-sprout them indoors, one eighth inch deep, which again is basically on the surface of the soil with barely being covered. So I'm gonna do them the same way I've been doing a lot of these others. So just sprinkling them, well, not sprinkling, but placing them on top. Let's see, this says I should be getting, sounds like I have a lot of seeds in here. Yeah, lots of seeds here. So I could be generous with them, but let me do it this way. Now, because this did say one eighth inch deep, that's, you know, not nothing. So I'm just going to put the slightest little bit of soil on the top. Good. Now, gomfrina. I have some gomfrina seeds in this packet. They want to be planted one eighth to one quarter inch deep. So I'm just going to scrape some of this soil off over here and I'll replace it after I put the seeds on top of these cells. Okay, these are the atomic purple gomfrina seeds. I bought these last year. I had a devil of a time trying to get them germinated. So I'm hopeful that they'll germinate for me this year, but maybe not. So we'll see. These look like. Mm, what do they look like? They look like sesame seeds that are wrapped in garlic paper. Does that make any sense? Anyway, I'm going to put two per cell in here. So I'm going to put three in each cell because they didn't do well for me last year. So I'm going to give them a fighting chance. Now, these, well, let me cover these up first and then I'll talk. All right, now these are truffle of pink gomfrinas that I tried to gather off of my plant but I don't know what it was supposed to look like. So let's see what I gathered and does it look anything like the seeds that I just pulled out of that packet? Probably not, but I probably have a lot of chaff. Ooh, yes, tons of chaff here. That is very not what I was hoping to see. What part of this would be a seed, do you reckon? you think any part of this is a seed? Maybe this little thing right down here at the bottom? I'm gonna say that's a seed. I'm gonna stick it in there. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is just shot in the dark. I don't even know. Uh, yeah, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. There's nothing in here that looks like the seeds that I just pulled out of that packet. This is all just chaff. All right, well, here's what I'm gonna do. 
I am going to be a risk taker. I'm going to just put a bunch of this stuff in each one of these cells and cover it up with some warm, wet soil and see when things sprouts. If it doesn't, I won't have lost anything. If it does, it'll be a miracle. You know what I mean? So yeah, just like this. I'm just going to stick that all there. And if we get like 15 seedlings in there, what an amazing day that'll be. If we get nothing, no surprise. I'm thinking we're going to get nothing. But we're going to see. I don't know. You can learn with me. You can come along on this crazy ride that we call experimental gardening. And we'll see what happens here. Cover this up. If there's any seeds in there, maybe they'll grow. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Truffle of Pink is a copyrighted plant, so you can't really take tissue cultures and stuff. I'm wondering if that means it doesn't put out seed or if it does that they're sterile. I don't know. But we're going to see. Maybe that'll germinate. Probably not. Maybe. Okay. I'm just going to toss this away. I actually have a bunch more of these packets. Okay, let me just save this. <sighs> All right, now I still have this little guy here. I'm going to put, what am I going to put in here? I'm going to put these quartet red stock into here. Uh, these, this packet is different from my other stock, 10-week stock. This one says that it takes six days to germinate instead of just five. So uh, that's why it wasn't in the, in the 15th, in the five-day pile. Anyway, so I'm just going to put some quartet stock in there. Quartet red. Although I do see different colored seeds in here, so I wonder if that means that uh, they're not all red, or if seed color doesn't really correlate to flower color. I don't know. I'm trying to get two of these stock seeds in each of these cells, just like I did the other ones. I know I forgot for making light over here. I'll get there. And press them in and vermiculate them. Did I do coverage? Did I cover them? Did I not? No, I covered the flocks. I didn't cover the stock. Is that right? It's vermiculite on the stock, right? I got all my seeds in. I got them covered with vermiculite to help with the algae problem and to uh, give a little bit of cover for the ones that are just surface sown. Now I'm going to uh, use my spray bottle to give them a light mist just to tuck them all into the soil. I know I could buy a battery operated mister, but you know, I got this at the Dollar Tree. I like saving money, so there's that. And now I just need a humidity dome and I'm gonna put these onto a heat mat. I got this humidity dome at Bootstrap Farmer as well and it has these vents, which are nice because you can open and close for ventilation um, moderation. All right, and onto the heat mat these go. And so now it was time to just repeat the entire process with a couple more trays of seeds. So I will put a list of all of the seeds that I started in the description box down below this video in case you're interested to know. But in general, all of the seeds that I planted, for the most part, needed to be planted on the surface of the soil, covered with vermiculite, and put either on the heat mat or just under the lights. I've done all of the seeds that need to go onto the heat mats. Now I have left things that don't need the heat mats. And I've got a couple of different kinds of containers here, uh, in addition to these six uh, cell, cell packs. I've got some two and a half inch pots. These are the things that I'm going to put these painted lady in, uh, pole beans into. So these are decorative pole bean. I'm not sure if we're going to eat them or if we're going to actually just use them as a ornamental, but um, they will grow like a vine. So I'm going to put them into these pots, which are deeper, and will um, it'll uh, give more room for their roots right away. So those are going into there. And then into this round container, I'm going to scatter some 
shallots. Where are they? Here they are. Shallots into here. And then once they're up and ready to plant out, I'll separate them and put them out on their own. So I didn't need to worry about a six pack for those. But the rest of these things are um, just, I'm going to just plant them all the same way as normal. This is going to be spinach. Spinach wants to be a half inch deep. So I'm going to use my pencil as a dibber and make some holes. I'm going to put two per cell. I've had trouble germinating spinach and keeping it alive. So this is my second round of spinach for this spring. We'll see if I can get these to work. The last one, I only got one plant to germinate and then it damped off. So it wasn't really working for me. These Lunaria seeds look like red pepper flakes. They look a lot like pepper seeds. Actually, they're bigger than pepper seeds. Uh, but they just want to be pressed into the surface of the soil. I'm going to do two per cell. These are very inexpensive. And I'm just going to cover them, just barely cover them with some soil. And I am almost out of vermiculite. Hopefully, I'll have enough to do this. Okay. As much as I have, it's going to have to do. Okay, and now these shallots. These are Conserver F1 hybrid shallots. So indoors in flats, broadcast half inch apart and cover a quarter of an inch deep. Tops might be trimmed to five inches tall, and then you take them outside and transplant them. So what did it say? Broadcast half inch apart. And they look just like allium seeds, onion seeds, etc. So I'm just going to sprinkle them in here. I think I just got some in this one here. Oh well. All right, and then those will grow. If they grow kind of closer together than a half inch, it'll be all right, I'm sure. I've never grown shallots before, so this is all an experiment. Um, so cover them with a quarter of an inch of soil. And then when these germinate and grow, I can keep them indoors. Let's see, what do the directions say? Trim them if I want to, to keep them five inches tall. Transplant and put them in the garden at four inches apart. Or I could have put them in a cell tray with three per cell and then put each cell six inches apart. All right, so anyway, harvest when they're developing skin and the tops are fail falling. Pull the plants, sun cure them. Okay. So, yeah, it's an experiment. I've never grown shallots. We'll see what happens here. And then finally, the last seed for today is this Painted Lady Pole Bean. Again, this is an ornamental bean. It is edible, but it has pretty red flowers on it. It says, a lush vine producing gorgeous blooms and yummy beans. Red and white blooms add color to a fence or trellis. It has edible beans that will add to any meal. Easy to grow vine. All right, so pick regularly to keep the plants producing. Once full sun grows six to seven feet tall, germinates in seven to 10 days, start them six weeks before your last frost, and they bloom in 50 to 60 days. So we're going to try these out. I don't know. It says to plant them a half an inch deep, and then you plant them 12 inches apart outside. Woo, look at these. Aren't they pretty? I'm not gonna try to save any of these. I'm just gonna plant them all. This one's broken, so it probably won't work. Two, four, six, eight, perfect. So I'm gonna put two per thing. I'm just gonna poke them down in there. And then cover them up. Hopefully we'll get 100% germination, but if not, that's okay. I think four of these is plenty. If I get six or eight, that'll be even better. I just need to put a couple more markers so that I don't lose track of them. I have this bag of vermiculite. I'm not sure if this is the right thing or not. We're going to find out. Yeah, perfect. Again, I don't need it for covering up the seeds in these pots, but it's for algae prevention. All right.
I've got the humidity dome on here and on all of the seeds that I just did today, and that will help keep the moisture in the tray so that the seeds will not dry out while they're trying to germinate. I'm going to put this onto the shelf, not on a heat mat. So let me find some room. They all want light to germinate, so I need to get them under some lights. I think I need to rearrange a little bit. All right, so this shelf has a heat mat that covers the entire two foot by four foot shelf. And these three trays are the seeds that I just did today that need heat to germinate. This is a tray of peppers and tomatoes that need heat to grow on. So uh, these cathedral bell vines, I could probably move out of here, and put them down off of a heat mat. Down on the bottom here, I, this is where I moved my snapdragons to because they weren't growing very fast and then people were telling me they were too warm. So I moved them down here and they're still not growing very fast, but at least they're not baking. Uh, this is a bunch of my seedlings. None of these, I mean, they're sitting on a heat mat, but the heat mat is not turned on. And then on this shelf, I need to adjust my light. Uh, this is the only shelf where I still have one of these old lights that um, it won't raise up any higher than it is. So I have to put low things under there. So, uh, all right, let me move my house plants. I gotta rearrange here. Tight quarters in here. All right, so that's under lights. Well, I can take the house plants upstairs, so that'll work. All right, so let's see. Now these are the Grow Ease self-watering seed trays. They have foxgloves in them. Foxgloves did not do great. One, two, three, four, five, six out of 24. Really bad. I think they're too wet. So I haven't put the automatic watering thing on them because my soil is holding more moisture than the peat-based soil did last year. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 24. Mm, yeah, that's not great. But So that's why I haven't put the auto-watering capillary mat underneath them because I think they're just staying too wet. This one's better. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 out of 24. Plus this one here is there, but it looks like it's not really very healthy. And there's one here that's not very healthy also. You might get more than 17, but I don't know. Not really happy with the foxgloves this year. This is a heat mat. It's not turned on either, so those not heating. So here we go. Now I got three full shelves. I could fit just a tiny bit more in this shelf if I have to. And I do have to because I got more to plant next week. We'll see what's coming up for next week. Next week is four weeks before my last expected frost. And all I got, I already did all my straw flowers. I could start my zinnias next week if I want, or I could just wait and do them outside. And then coming up after that, nasturtium, marigolds, saponaria, and then stuff outside. Ooh. Yeah, so I don't have a whole lot more to go under here, so that's good news. Just a few things next week. Zinnias, if I want to start them, I may or may not start zinnias inside. I'm not going to start cosmos inside. I'm going to just direct sow those. So, yeah, that's what's happening. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me on this fourth time that I've tried to film my seed starting adventures this spring. Um, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. I will put links down below for uh, these Bootstrap Farmer seed starting trays and cell packs and other equipment. I'll also put a link down there for um, this green tray that I use and any of the other tools and equipment that you see me using today in case you're interested in that. Also, I'll put a list of all of the plants that I started today in case you're curious. I know I whipped through some of them and I didn't talk about all of them, um, but generally they're flowering plants, flowering annuals, some perennials, not very many. So thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a good time wherever you are in whatever gardening area you are and whatever um, time of your gardening year you find yourself in. I hope to see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.